Well, here we are. It's been quite a long journey, but we've reached the end, at least I think, of Bleach Brave Soul's Spirits Are Forever With You tie-in promotion, which over the last few months, and even years in fact, has given us the beyond Bankai forms of many captains in the series. These forms, which were analogous to the Hogyoku Ascended forms of the Espada the game delivered, I think as part of its Can't Fear Your Own World tie-in promotion sometime before, gave us an opportunity to revel in the captains as they might appear should they attain a power even greater than that of Bankai, a non-canon alternate universe glimpse at what they might each look like if they had effectively fused with their Zanpak toe. Honestly, I've really enjoyed these forms across the board, and in my opinion, this is what Brave Souls does best, and where the game is really able to find value as part of the wider franchise. Much like with the Espada before them, some of the forms definitely look better than others, and seem to have had more thought put into them, their motifs, and what they represent as well. However, unlike with the Hogyoku Espada, there seems to have been a conscious effort for the most part to keep them relatively simple. Where some of the Espada felt a little over-designed at times, I've personally appreciated the restraint shown in these captain forms. And if this is the end of the promotion, it feels like a genuine confirmation that Rose and Kensei just aren't given the same level of appreciation as the rest of the captains at all, and probably never will be, with the two of them being conspicuously absent from the lineup, despite being captains, fully fledged captains during the Thousand Year Blood War arc and beyond. And that's a real shame. You could have easily moved Kisuke into this month's banner alongside Gein and Mayuri, maybe collectively calling them schemers or something like that, and had Rose and Kensei in the banner with Shinji. Then there are some other characters that probably deserve this treatment too, and if they do return to this in the future, I'd love to see that. Characters like Renji, Rukia, some of the more prominent vice captains perhaps. Regardless of the story, I would have liked to have seen them purely for the designs they might have come up with, and I still hope we might do in the future. Anyway, it's time to take a look at the last two captains, Gin Ichimaru and Mayuri Kurotsuchi, both of whom have been highly anticipated, and judging from the reactions I've seen throughout the community, seem to be somewhat polarising. As always, and for potentially the final time, let's take a look at their individual designs to see if we can't find any cool details or references to the source material itself. But before we do that, guys, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure to do that now for more Bleach content like this every single week. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well to help support me and the channel. And if you want to take that support for me another step further, I do also have a Patreon as well. And as always, I want to say a massive shout out and a huge thank you to everyone supporting me over there on Patreon. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And if you want to keep supporting me as well in a much easier way, you can go and check out my second channel, Mr. Tomo Talks Games. Maybe give it a subscribe, watch some of the videos. Again, I would really appreciate it. But no matter how you choose to support me, as always, just a massive thank you to each and every one of you for simply being here. It really does mean the world to me. And one last thing, there will potentially be some probably small spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War arc to come in this video, so just a heads up for you there. So we've looked at every single one of these quote-unquote beyond Bankai characters to date, and it's been quite the ride. From the initial reveal of Byakuya's angelic form, right the way through a plethora of characters including Yamamoto, Kyoraku, and Ukitake, to Yoroichi, Soifon, and more each form has brought something different to the table. And so, what do Gein and Mayuri as the final instalments have in store for us? Let's start with Gein, as he's probably the more interesting of the two of them, and of the two of them, this is my favourite design. Reactions, however, to Gein's new form have been pretty mixed overall, but I have to say I really like it. I think it looks very clean and simple, but crucially not underwhelming. In fact, it actually looks surprisingly regal, with the proud pronounced collar of silvery fur and the flowing braid of hair 
trailing behind him, especially when considering Gein's personality and his tendency to conceal not only his true self, but his motives as well. Being flashy like this isn't really his prerogative, but I think it works well here. This is supposed to be a form that, judging by some of the past designs anyway, at least somewhat alludes back to his Zanpakuto and its core messaging and themes. And with his Zanpakuto having a name like God's Spear, there's definitely an air of importance to it befitting such grandiose attire. In fact, the entire look and feel of this design is one of a snake-like fluidity. From the hair, to the floating serpentine ribbons draped over his shoulders, to even the lengthy white cloak he wears from his time in Waco Mundo. And of course it makes sense that Gein is wearing his post-defection outfit here, as Tosin too was based predominantly around his Oran Karak appearance, and Aizen as well if we consider that form to be his version of his Beyond Bankai look. What's really interesting to me at least anyway is that Gein must have been a difficult character to create a design like this for. Unlike the majority of captains, he wasn't present in the Zanpakuto Rebellion filler arc, so there's no baseline blueprint for Shinso's Zanpakuto spirit. And not only that, but unlike his comrade Tosin, his closest counterpart really in this set, he doesn't transform in any way, so there's nothing to work with there either. What we know about Shinso really is limited purely to what we see in the source material itself, and that's maybe why there doesn't seem to be that much actually referencing it here. Instead, the primary references seem to come from Gein's own personality, both how he's been described, how he's described himself, and how Kubo has actively depicted him. There are two primary animals being used in this look. Of course, predominantly the snake, but also the fox as well. The mischievous, ever-present grin on Gein's face has always been likened to that of a fox, and Kubo even depicts him with a kitsune mask on the colour page where his true intentions were finally revealed. The collar of fur and the flowing braid are a reference to the fox-like nature of Gein's appearance, as well as what appears to be two upright shoulder pieces beside Gein's head that resemble the ears of a fox as well. Of course, we've seen alternate versions of Gein in Bleach Brave Souls depict him as a fox before, specifically his Spirit Society design, where it was a lot more pronounced. The snake aspect is featured more heavily throughout the design and within Gein's own gameplay too. A lot of people were perplexed by him having an ability that increases the rate of coin drops, but this seems to be a reference to the White Snakes of Iwakuni, which is an extremely precious creature regarded in Japan as a national treasure, and seeing one is believed to bring you luck with, you guessed it, money. Meanwhile, on his actual design itself, the plating of snake scales features throughout, with the interlocking scales reminiscent of another character in Bleach, Sun Sun's Resurrection. Though hers appears to be the snake's underbelly, not least because of where it's positioned on her body, whereas Gein's are positioned more as the scales on a snake's back, where the scales hanging from his waist look more akin to those on Sun Sun's torso. Two cycloptic snakes float over his shoulders, their massive, gleaming eyes prominent where Gein's are closed, almost as though as they could be acting as his own eyes. I mean, this is either two separate one-eyed snakes, or two halves of the same snake. It could probably be either. And to top everything off, there's a gleaming gem in the centre of his outfit. I initially wasn't sure what this was. I wondered if the sparkle of the crystal was meant to reflect the stereotypically hypnotic gaze of a snake, but then I figured the eyes on the scales were achieving that anyway, especially with Gein's third strong attack where they flash up on the screen. No, I'm fairly certain this is actually just supposed to be the Hogyoku, sat at the very centre, the very core of Gein's being, reflective of the ultimate endgame of his true motivation. His desire, his goal, was to rip the Hogyoku away from Aizen and take back what was stolen from Rangiku. So it makes sense that here, in a form that exposes the recesses of his soul, 
the Hogyoku sits prominently over his chest. Gin's ultimate move is directly referencing his Bankai Kamashini no Yari and its ultimate technique as well, and therefore by extension Gin's relationship with Rangiku. By swiping his sword, the blade disappears, instead being replaced by a trail of dust and shards, of course representing the fragment of Shinso that turns to dust to be left inside the body of Gin's victim, while also feeling like a more overt reflection of Rangiku's Hainako than ever before. This entire form also inflicts poison with its abilities, again a nod to Kamishini no Yari's most powerful attack. Again, Gin's form might not be for everyone, and I do sympathise with the team creating it, as I think he's a very tough character to design for in this regard. That being said, I personally like it a lot, and it's definitely my favourite of the two. Speaking of which, this is not what I was expecting for Mayuri Kurotsuchi. To be totally honest, I don't really know what I was expecting, I don't know how crazy I thought they might go, but on first viewing this does feel like a disappointment. I was kind of hoping Mayuri might become an eldritch experimental monstrosity, but this is considerably more low-key. Which is ironic, as Mayuri is almost the complete opposite of Gin in regards to their showmanship, considering himself superior to, as he says, most other peons in his eyes, and delights in letting everybody know that, going so far as to quite literally shine like a beacon in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. It's possible, I suppose, that Mayuri might see himself as having ascended beyond the more disturbing and downright messier forms that might be better suited to villainous hollow abominations like Xyloporo and Araniero. Compared to characters of their calibre, Mayuri might see himself as being more refined, and that might be reflected in the fact that his transformation isn't quite as grotesque as I think people were expecting. Thankfully though, Mayuri's design comes in two parts due to the heavy influence of Ashisogi Jizo, which features prominently throughout. Let's look at Mayuri himself first, as this is probably the most simplistic element of the design. Mayuri himself is almost completely unchanged. The most obvious difference is his new headdress, which is now completely gold and takes the shape of the wings of Ashisogi Jizo's Zanpakuto spirit, as it appeared in the Zanpakuto Rebellion filler arc. While I think this does really work as a design, the reason it's underwhelming is because Mayuri is always changing his headdress, regardless of any kind of transformation or power-up. This could quite easily just be Mayuri's new look at the start of an arc, which I guess, depending on how you feel, could be seen as a compliment towards this look. But is it even really the result? of his Beyond Bankai form, or has he just adorned himself with a new outfit to celebrate? Presumably it is actually part of the transformation, but with Mayuri it is difficult to know, especially when the transformation, when the changes in his design, don't really extend much beyond that. Mayuri, however, now wearing the wings of Ashisogi Jizo is quite fitting for someone who thinks so highly of himself and his powers, especially now they're made simply of a brilliant gold. That being said, Mayuri has shown a callous disdain for his Zanpakuto from time to time in the past. The two protrusions jutting out of either side of his head have chains attached to them, from which dangle a pair of bells. These bells are identical to the ones that used to hang from the halo above his Bankai Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo. Mayuri also wears a new sash, now seemingly made up of the legs of his Zanpakuto's Bankai, which is fittingly creepy and grim, making it appear as though he's constantly in the embrace of his sword, while the blood-red cloth hanging from his waist is akin to the cloak his Bankai wore in its original form too. The what appear to be purple bags under Mayuri's eyes seem to be a reference to the purple markings around the eyes of his Zanpakuto, both in its Bankai and its Zanpakuto Rebellion spirit form. Though again, whether this is a physical change or just an addition to his makeup is unclear. And that's really it for Mayuri, which is a bit of a shame. That being said, the fact that the spirit of Ashisogi Jizo is actually present at all times clinging to his back elevates this Beyond Bankai form a lot for me, and maybe even goes some way to excusing the relative lack of changes on Mayuri himself. 
I actually quite like this new look for Ashisogi Jizo. It's almost like a halfway point between the Shikai and the Bankai, not quite fully formed and yet more versatile on the whole, although as we'll get into in a little bit later, there's actually an argument that this is a definitive evolution over the design of his Barnakai itself. Mayuri's connection to his Zanpakuto seems to mirror Komamura's now, with each of Mayuri's strikes reflected in the legs of the spirit behind him. Certain aspects of the design are well thought out, like the creature's enormous, wispy eyebrows made up of the poison that it spews in Bankai, and the fact that, as I mentioned a second ago, not only are the wings on its back now a reference to its original Zanpakuto spirit from that anime-only arc, but that they help it feel like a true evolution of Bankai in terms of its metamorphosis. The creature has gone from being a colossal caterpillar to a more compact butterfly. Mayuri's third strong attack combines the paralysis ability of his Shikai with the poison mist of his Bankai to great effect, while Mayuri's ultimate attack has some very nice imagery to it as well, where I feel the whole design kind of is pulled together quite effectively. The enormous silver ring that used to sit above Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo's head has now been transformed into a golden teething ring for the butterfly spirit, though it does briefly take a moment to shine, to glitter, behind Mayuri's head, gilding him like the sun, or even like a halo for the divine. The ring then latches onto the victim, locking them in place, before Mayuri sets his Zanapakuto spirit upon them in truly terrifying fashion. Ashisogi Jizo pounces on the enemy before devouring them as the captain looks on in intrigue, which of course is something we've seen both in Mayuri's battles against Xyloporo and Pernida. It's honestly a pretty great ultimate attack, and when seeing it all come together like that, I think it gives us a much clearer picture of what the team was going for with Mayuri's overall look. And honestly, while my first impressions of Mayuri's Beyond Bankai form weren't great, I've grown to like it more and more the more I talk about it. I do wish the team had done a little more still with Mayuri himself, but the implementation of the Zanpakuto spirit and many of Mayuri's themes works really well. And that just about does it for the two latest Beyond Bankai captain forms, as well as the entirety of the Spirits Are Forever With You tie-in promotion for Bleach Brave Souls. I've had honestly a great time discussing each and every one of these, and I really do like almost all of them. It's crazy to think that we were talking about the trio of Yamamoto, Ukitake, and Kyoraku at around almost the exact same time the Hell chapter was released. But let me know in the comments what you think of Gein and Mayuri's new forms, which of them is your favourite and why, and which of these Spirits Are Forever With You forms is your favourite in general, now that we've, at least for the foreseeable future, seen them all. But that's it for the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't done already. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out Mr. Tomo Talks Games. And until next time, I'll catch you later. I'll see you then.